Hey guys, Ben here from United Yacht Sales and welcome back to the channel. I'm here in sunny Fort Lauderdale today to take you on a video walkthrough tour of my latest listing, Shangri-La. She's a 65 foot custom catamaran uh, from the drawing board of the great Alex Simonis, uh, known for his work with the Simonis Vugud design firm, as well as uh, designing most leopard catamarans that are currently sailing the world. So yes, uh, she's lying here in Fort Lauderdale, available for immediate sale. I'll have a full spec sheet in the description that you can check out. Thank you, and I uh, hope you enjoy the tour. So this is Shangri-La. She's a 65-foot Alex Simonis design built in St. Kitts. Since I can get away with it, we'll go down here first and look at the bridge deck clearance. It's really good, which is nice, because South African boats from this era do have a bit of a reputation for being a little uh, close to the water. So up here we've got a split trampoline with some teak. You've got a latch up there that folds up to access the anchor. The boat does have a bowsprit, so see part of this is the uh, for the uh, dolphin striker, but the other part of this uh, A-frame shape that you'll see is hinged down here, actually folds down, and that's how you can fly a downwind sail. Got a self-furling jib. Strangely enough, the boat has no forward windows, but it does have four hatches, so I'll open them later. You get really good ventilation inside the salon. It has not just one, but two anchors, so you've got a pair of Lumar windlasses and your chain locker. And I think the spinnaker should be in, in here as well. Really like the foredeck area on this boat. It's nice and big. Take a quick look at the rig. Has a really big, powerful mainsail. As well as a radar. Right up there. Everything on this boat, you'll notice, is just really huge. Just the size of this jib car is just astounding. We've got a life raft on the side, handhold. Uh, your shrouds come down here and go directly into the uh, hull. We've got nice big sugar scoops. It's actually in your swim ladder down there, which is actually kind of funny because the sugar scoop. Uh, designs on this boat remind me of the Bahia uh, 46 over there. Both these designs are from around the same era, so it's not, you know, purely coincidental. Boat uses a hydraulic crane to lift and lower the dinghy. The dinghy is brand new. It's an aluminum high field with a center console. We've got a 70 horsepower Yamaha engine on the back right there. You can come around the back here. You'll notice the owner has outfitted the boat with brand new diving equipment. This boat would be great for a dive charter operation of sorts. And we'll look inside the mechanical space up here. So like I said, the boat has brand new dive equipment. There's the compressor, uh, courtesy of Brownies of Fort Lauderdale. I wasn't sponsored to say that, but you know, they're good guys, they do good work. And before I go ahead, I'd just like to point out how huge this uh, mechanical space is. My head barely comes up to the combing on the hatch. So I've got six feet of headroom in here, which is just astounding. We've got a Nanny Kubata uh, generator down here. There's a Stamford generator in the other mechanical space. Your hydraulic steering gear is back there. And you've got a winch for, uh, sorry, vice for, you know, working on parts or anything that needs to be fixed. Uh, as well as an air condition unit in here, big one. And water maker is on the opposite side in the other mechanical space. And down here, you've got shaft driven uh, Yanmar engines. These engines were, this boat was repowered in 2015 
So it's got, you know, really not very high hours at all. I'm sure it runs great. And there's the rest of the layout. So back up top, we've got again, backside view of the dinghy. Notice the name of the boat, Shangri-La. It's a really nice name. I believe Shangri-La refers to paradise in some kind of Eastern fairy tale or something like that. Anyway, you've got Traveler which runs to this winch and uh, you know, the Traveler just has, you know, it's a real beefy piece of equipment, huge Lumar blocks. Second life raft up top and uh, Speaking of more beefy Lumar equipment, you've got two winches here for handling the lines. Both of these are electric and you know, they're just, they're real big, bigger than my hand. You've got not just one, but two helm stations. And this enclosure as well is, is much newer. And you've got a vinyl soft top for keeping out the weather. So you've got newer Raymarine electronics, depth sounder, ta uh, tachometers, uh, chart plotter, wind indicator. We'll do a quick visibility check. There isn't really much to uh, stern, so no problems there. And remember, this is a this is a two helm setup, so you have a second point of visibility over there. Notice you've got. Uh, seating all around the cockpit as well as the teak is in really good condition astoundingly good condition and you've got two bolster seats as well with foot rests we'll go inside now good thing about these doors is that they open and close in unison they slide real nice as well. I can operate them one-handed. That's good. Heard people complain about door quality lately. It's glad the old stuff still works. So since this is a custom catamaran, it's not going to have a typical sort of uh, interior that you'd see on like a lagoon or something. It's got two seating areas as well as these four hatches here. So there's lots of, it's real easy to cool off the salon. You've got uh, a second seating area as well as a throw space for storage up there. And the most interesting feature is that it has an island bar. Uh, this is just kind of a feature I've noticed people that build custom catamarans tend to like to include. You've got one fridge here, sink, uh, wine cooler, big flat screen TV, more, more cold storage down here. And it's just, it's just not really found typically on production or even really semi-custom boats. So it's just, just something I've noticed. We will make our way to the first uh, guest room, but not before first stopping off at the electrical panel. There are of course many systems on a catamaran this large and complicated, winches, electronics, water maker, generator, lights of all kinds. It's all laid out very intuitively. You've got your mains up there and the rest of the systems are below it. And the rest of your indicators are up here. Notice. We'll take a look at the first guest uh, cabin. Apologies for any lighting issues. I'm the kind of man who goes to war. The lighting I have, not the one I want. So in the first guest cabin, we've got a thwartship berth. All of the berths on this boat are thwartships. You've got a storage area opposite at the, at the foot of the bed, a hatch up there. And the engines are beneath the bed, but you cannot access them from the bed they're actually sealed off. So there's no real way for uh, smells or you know smoke to penetrate into the main cabin, despite the uh, arrangement of the engine. We'll take a look at the, uh, the head is mirrored on either side. So sorry, the lighting in there isn't good. We got better lighting in the other head. We'll stop, this boat is a uh, galley down. So we'll stop here first. We've got a dishwasher, as well as a dual basin sink, cabinetry up here, a 
propane stove, real big one, oven as well, lots of kitchen implements, really functional galley for running term chargers, a drop-in freezer, and all in all just a really good space. The boat is galley down as you see, but you know if you're running term charters, uh, many people do prefer that. It's just a little nicer. So we have the second guest cabin in the aft. Same layout. I really do like the woodwork on this boat. It all flows together real nice. Here's the aforementioned head. You've got your shower here. And sink and vanity. We'll go to the forward staterooms now. Uh, don't mind the noise, that's just the uh, fenders on the dock being a little dramatic. The for there is no master stateroom in this boat, but uh, I think the forward staterooms are slightly nicer. We've got a berth up here. Steps as well as a seating area for getting dressed and undressed. All the cabins come with uh, hanging lockers. The forward head, the first of two, a sink and vanity, as well as a toilet, a Lumar hatch for ventilation, and a shower with swinging glass doors. Real nice. Again, sorry for the fenders being a little dramatic. And we've got the second cabin, which is mirrored on the opposite side. We'll take a look real quick. I like this one the best, but that's just me. Anyway, same deal. Really do got to appreciate the woodwork in this, in this cabinet specifically. You'll notice that the doors on this boat are all really big. Uh, there's a reason for that, which is that, some of you may know, doors can be an integral part of the boat. They help keep the structure, which is why on passage you should generally keep them closed. Don't want things to bend and warp. And again, same view of the uh, head, just mirrored on the opposite side. Interesting thing to note about this boat, uh, parts of it are fiberglass, the top sides with a foam core, and everything beneath the waterline is actually uh, Kevlar. So it's a very light boat, very strong. If I had to make a off-the-cuff comparison, if you're looking for something similar to a Leopard, say, 62, but minus the flybridge, this could certainly fit the bill. As always, if you liked the video, please be sure to like. If you disliked it, leave a thumbs down, leave a comment, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.